Welcome to Miami Beach, or Bienvenidos to Miami, as they say down here. It is the first day of the largest art fair in the United States. Art Basel Miami Beach gets underway here with no fewer than 267 galleries under the big top of the convention center. Let's have a look around. So, you know, if you go to a lot of art fairs, they can all kind of begin to blend together. But the one really important selling point of Art Basel Miami Beach is how many Latin American galleries are here. I mean, for those of us who don't live in the region, this is the chance to see work from, from Mexico, from Argentina, from Venezuela, really from Brazil more than any of them. There are no fewer than 15 galleries here uh, from Rio and Sao Paulo. And I think really the most interesting of them is Bergamina Gamija from Sao Paulo, who've done a really interesting historical presentation of work by Roberto Brulo Marx. So Roberto Bula Marx is really known as a landscape designer, probably the most famous of all the Brazilian landscape designers. He did the promenade that goes along Copacabana Beach and all the big, beautiful gardens of Rio de Janeiro. But he was a painter, he was a painter as well, and it's really forgotten. I'd actually never seen Bula Marx's paintings before. And you know, he studied with Moreau and Arp and some of the big School of Paris guys in the, uh, in the years between the wars. But of course, Bula Marx was really fusing some interesting strategies of European modernism with a much more tropical aesthetic in some ways. Sarah Douglas, Editor-in-Chief of Art News, and a long time Art Basel Miami Beach goer. Yes. I mean, how many tours of duty have you done now? Um, I've been to every single Art Basel Miami Beach except one, 2004. Right. So I suppose you could say I'm, you know, in a sort of inadvertent veteran. <laughs> Has it completely event. changed from the sort of small yeah, scale? I, yeah. You know, in 2002, I remember coming here. Um, and the, you know, what really what's changed is the kind of social events. Oh, completely, um, right? Yeah, what's going on around the social events. So, so was it just like one tiny party that everybody went to? In 2002, it was just yeah. one street party in the design district. And I think it was Craig Robbins put on some big party. It was Saturday night, which in itself is interesting because now it's shifted so that it's the Saturday night before. And by the that's following Saturday night, the major collectors right. are gone, you know, and it's really <laughs> just a kind of wild social scene that's left that has little connection. And it's it's gotten a lot more more crowded here. Maybe that's a sign of there are more collectors. It's a busy, it's a busy place. So we're here on the booth of Mitchell Innocent Nash with the only critic in the art world who's more fearsome than I am. Pickle, have you seen anything that you really like? Oh yeah, I like all the sculptures on the floor. Mm. You know, and the grass, and yeah. I, I feel like, like the stuff. grass might be the right level for your, uh, your art appreciation. You know, it's really easy in an art fair to get absorbed by the youngest and the newest and the hippest, but there is such an important amount of art by, by older artists, or indeed artists who are no longer alive. Joan Mitchell, one of the sort of important figures of the second generation of American Abstract Expressionism, has got this really glorious work from 1977 on the booth of Edward Tyler Nam in New York City. Um, and, you know, she began in a sort of language of pure abstraction, but as she got older and also as she moved to France, um, there began to be a little more figuration and a slightly more landscape-like form of painting, very much inspired by Claude Monet. Um, Mitchell is finally getting the reputation that she deserves as an American painter, and God knows in the art market when women remain underexposed, undervalued, and undersold, there's finally being a little bit of correction, but still, there's quite a way to go. Art Basel is still by far the most important art fair in the United States and, and for the kind of collector who needs a car with a giant boulder that's dropped through the roof, this is still the place to be. As for the 99.9% .9 of us who are not actually art collectors and who are not here in an acquisition mode, is it necessary? I think I would say there's still something to be said for Art Basel as long as you can sift the important art from the chaos of the, the partying and the champagne sponsorships. And then, you know, the best part is that there's the beach outside. I mean, as soon as you're done here in the convention center, you can throw in your swimsuit and hit the waves, which is what I'm about to do right now. Thanks. <laughs>